Okay, in today's video, we're going to show you how to overboard a ceiling. I'm going to show you some crucial tips on how to do it alone. This is the ceiling we're working on. But first off, we've got to get some demolition out of the way. So we're going to get rid of these wood panels, rip them down, and then we've also got to take the coving off. And what this gives you is a blank canvas to start again. So if there is anything in the way of the ceiling to begin with, I'd always recommend taking it down and starting from scratch. It just makes the whole job a lot easier to deal with. Old fashioned polystyrene COVID. It's a bit easier to rip off. Okay, so we've done the prep work, we've stripped the ceiling, took the panels off, and then got the COVID off. So that's where we're up to. But now, what you typically have to do with overboarding, you have to find where the joists are, which usually means you've got a hit within the ceiling to find out whereabouts the joists are sitting. So you actually have to hammer holes in. But, luckily enough, where these panels were, they've showed the screw holes. So every time there's a screw, I know where the joists are. So obviously running that way. I've got another section here. But even better than that, the good thing about when taking coving down is either a gap or you can see exactly where the joists are. But they've filled sections where they were. So if I can't see them where the screws are, if you move across, they've just filled. Can you see them white little fill marks? So I know exactly where the joists are, which I must admit is half the battle. Like I said, usually if this was standard ceiling you wanted to overboard, you'd have to hit holes along each section trying to find a joist that's typically there there typically every 400 if they've done the job right thankfully we've got it all marked out and we know exactly where they are so we're pretty blessed but now we need to mark on the ceilings and our quick way of doing it is with this this is a string line so what we do is have fixing on one end of the ceiling clip this onto the fixing move across to where the other joist is which is clearly see where they've been filled there and then we ping a line what this will do was give us a clear distinction on where the joists are sitting now this is very important you could it's very important to know where the joists are so when you're running your plasterboard you know exactly where to screw and exactly where to fix and where to cut so i'm going to do that now this is a godsend and what i highly recommend when old boarded ceilings is one of these this is a stanley fat match chalk line they're good very resilient and they last so Get one of these bad boys. As you can see, what you do is you mark your joists. In the center of the joists, so I've got a nice, even reading. This gives something for your chalk line to stick to. So you literally hook that on, and then we're running end to end. So there we go, we hook on. So I do is roll it up, leave it hanging, pick it up on the other side and start again. It's fine now. Okay, so we've got a string line set. As you can see, we've got a line set everywhere. Now we've got our joist running vertically from where I'm standing. So we want to run the board horizontally to that. So what I'm going to do is get the measurement from this end of the wall to where the closest 2.4 is, which is there. I'm going to cut it in place and I'm going to show you the best way to get these set up. So this best way to get your plasterboard up on your own, these are plasterboard props. And what you can do is you set the height, you've got a little pump, so when you've got it ready, pump the height up. And what you do is you adjust it so it's pretty much touching the ceiling, like this one is there. Get the board up and then using the pump, you pump it up using this. So you take it up on your own, put these in position either side of the board and then pump it when you're ready. I usually like help, but I couldn't get anyone today, so let's try it. I'll be honest, putting plasterboards up on your own, doing ceilings, it can be tricky. But what you want to do is you want to hold the board central. So you want to grab it roughly central to the board, and that way the weight's evenly distributed either side. And then when you're taking it up, you want to push it up, and then when you're roughly in position... Grab it with either hand, whichever one you feel more comfortable with, and hold it in the centre of the board. Don't worry about the flex either side. It will dip a bit, but the board will hold its own weight. And then with your free hand, you use your pump 
to pump up the plasterboard props and then that way when you're pumping it it'll bring it closer and closer to the ceiling and with enough pressure you'll jack it. So the board's up, it's propped up by my props. One thing we want to check is that we've got the right distance so it's running like just see the chalk line where I centre the joist and we're at the centre over there. So that's good. It's good positioning. It's nice central to the joist. Now using the lines we know exactly where to screw in. Got either side so now we're just gonna fire some screws in to that board. Job done. We'll talk about screw size in a minute but if it's a rough guide I'm roughly putting five screws for this um, width of plasterboard so it's roughly every 300 millimeters you want to be putting a screw in. Just got a decent amount of screws in, release the prop, pull that aside and then you're free to carry on just screwing them up. So now we're going to cut this piece in and then with the off cut use your end to fill in the gap. You'll have staggered joints. The last thing you want is to make sure that you've got the same joints running in line. One last thing I didn't mention before, you're obviously holding the board central but you also want your ladders to be central at the position of where you're going to be putting the board. This way when you're walking up you're not going to be uh, thrown from either side. If your ladder's central it's going to be a lot easier to position. Another point is it doesn't always work perfectly, it can take a bit of time and trial and error to get right. So once you're up there, what I would recommend is just jack it up anyway, put your plasterboard props in position and then get down a ladder and see roughly how you're sitting. Sometimes it might need a little bit off the board, sometimes you might just need to move it a little bit. But it's always good practice to pump the jacks up in place, put it in position and then get down from your ladders and see what you need to do. So it doesn't always work perfectly and it can take a bit of trial error, but just stick to it and you should be alright. Right, let's talk about screws and drills for the moment. I'm using 75mm screws here. I like to have a fair bite with my, um, within the plasterboard. They say you want at least a 30mm allowance. Uh, with the 75s I just know it's going to pull in that board tight. And we've got at least 40mm to play with there. I'd rather have a bigger screw than a smaller one and um, you know, risk it coming down eventually. And the other thing is I like to use a combi drill when I'm drilling. I find the impact drivers can be a bit too aggressive, it's too much torque and it can actually weaken the screw because of the amount of power it's pushing behind. With a combi you've got more control, yeah it is slower I must admit but you've got more control with the screws and you can adjust your depth. Um, for me much for a combi and it's actually better for the screws because like I said the impacts are that aggressive, they can snap the heads and weaken the uh, screw within time. So. At least with the combi, you know it's going to take its time, but it's going to do it the right job and do it precisely. So that is why I'm using a combi, and that's the size screws I like to use when overboarding ceilings. Again, it's probably all overkill, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. With this, we've now got staggered joints. So we've got that obviously that running through, but we've got staggered joints running through there, which means it's going to minimise the cracking. If you had the joints running through everywhere, then it's more likely to crack in them areas. So when you are plasterboarding, Full board cut, off cut here, full board onwards. That's it, ceiling all boarded, staggered joints, nice cuts, ready for plastering. That's the process field. If you like this video, please hit the like button, please subscribe to our channel. If you wanna learn how to plaster the ceiling, learn a full process and how to get this skimmed, then feel free to join our free welcome course where we'll show the full process of plastering or watch one of these playlists that's coming up right next on the right. But either way, thanks for watching. Blaine Gray, a plastic cleaners. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers.